Kung Chikla Ferva, benevolent viewers. Kung Chikla Ferva means how are you in Guernsey or Guernsey Norman French, one of the regional languages of Guernsey. I'm Michelle. The spirited Guernsey people wish you ever brighter tomorrows in the celestial love and light of the heavens. Alice Bailey was an extraordinary British-American esoteric author of the 20th century. She was one of the first to use the term New Age, referring to a better future for the world that fulfills the divine plan of love and light. Born in 1880, Alice Bailey in her youth was a devoted Christian who later developed an extensive knowledge and practice of theosophy. In 1919, at the age of 39, she began a spiritual journey of inner telepathic communications with a great ascended master, Jual Kul, also called the Tibetan, or Master DK. Over the next three decades, until the end of her life, the master thus transmitted ancient teachings of the ageless wisdom to his chosen disciple, which she diligently recorded as 19 books. In addition, Alice Bailey wrote other profound books on her own. In 1922, Alice Bailey and her husband, Foster Bailey, founded the Lucis Trust and the Arcane School to offer the teachings and meditation guidance to the public. The non-profit Lucis Trust is still active today and continues to publish Alice Bailey's works, including as free e-books, for people to study in this special period of our planet. Today we continue with a selection from Alice Bailey's fascinating book, The Reappearance of the Christ, in which more signs are presented that indicate the life-changing coming of the Christ, surrounded by great saints. Chapter 2 Christ's Unique Occasion The World Today In the Middle Ages of history and earlier, it was the churches and the schools of philosophy which provided the major avenues of his subjective activity, but it will not be so when he is objectively and actually here. This is a point which the churches and organized religions would do well to remember. There is now a shift of his emphasis and attention into two new fields of endeavor. First, into the field of worldwide education, and secondly, into the sphere of implementing intelligently those activities which come under the Department of Government in its three aspects of statemanship, of politics, and of legislation. The common people are today awakening to the importance and responsibility of government. It is, therefore, realized by the hierarchy that before the cycle of true democracy, as it essentially exists and will eventually demonstrate, can come into being, the education of the masses in cooperative statemanship and economic stabilization through right sharing and in clean political interplay is imperatively necessary. The long divorce between religion and politics must be ended and this can now come about because of the high level of the human mass intelligence and the fact that science has made all men so close that what happens in some remote area of the Earth's surface is a matter of general interest within a few minutes. This makes it uniquely possible for him to work in the future. The development of spiritual recognition is the great need today in preparation for his reappearance. No one knows in what nation he will come. He may appear as an Englishman, a Russian, 
an African, a Latin, a Turk, a Hindu, or any other nationality. Who can say which? He may be a Christian or a Hindu by faith, a Buddhist or of no particular faith at all. He will not come as a restorer of any of the ancient religions, including Christianity, but he will come to restore man's faith in the Father's love, in the fact of the livingness of the Christ, and in the close, subjective, and unbreakable relationship of all men everywhere. The facilities of the entire world of contact and relation will be at his disposal. That will be part of the uniqueness of his opportunity, and for this he too must prepare. Another unique factor which will distinguish his coming will be not only the general expectancy, but also the fact that much is today known and taught about the Kingdom of God, or the spiritual hierarchy of the planet. Everywhere, in all countries, there are thousands who are interested in the fact of that hierarchy, who believe in the Masters of the Wisdom, the Disciples of the Christ, and who will not be surprised when this group of sons of God surrounding their great leader, the Christ, makes its appearance on earth. The churches in all countries have familiarized the public with the phrase, the Kingdom of God. The esotericists and occultists everywhere have publicized the fact of the hierarchy during the past century. The spiritualists have laid the emphasis upon the aliveness of those who have passed over into the hidden world of being, and their guides have also borne testimony to the existence of an inner spiritual world. All this creates a unique preparedness which presents the Christ with unique opportunities and unique problems. All these spiritual forces and many others both within and without the world religions and the philosophical and humanitarian groups are working at this time under direction, are closely related, and their activities most intimately synchronized. They are all working together, even if this is not physically apparent, because in the human family, there are those at every stage of responsiveness. The forces of regeneration, of reconstruction, of restoration, and of resurrection are making their presence felt in all the many groups which are seeking to aid and lift humanity to rebuild the world, to restore stability and the sense of security, and thus, consciously or unconsciously, prepare the way for the coming of the Christ. There is also a unique revival of the ancient teaching of the Buddha, and it is penetrating into the Western countries and finding devoted adherents in every land. The Buddha is the symbol of enlightenment, and there is everywhere today a unique emphasis upon light. Countless millions down the ages have recognized the Buddha as the light bearer from on high. His four noble truths exposed the causes of human trouble and pointed to the cure. He taught, cease to identify yourselves with material things or with your desires. Gain a proper sense of value. Cease regarding possessions and earthly existence as of major importance. Follow the noble eightfold path, which is the path of right relations, right relations to God and right relations to your fellow men, and thus be happy. The steps on this path are 1. Right values 2. Right speech 3. Right modes of living 4. Right thinking 5. Right aspiration 6. Right conduct 7. Right effort 8. Right rapture or happiness This message is uniquely needed today 
in a world in which most of these right steps to happiness have been consistently ignored. It is on the foundation of this teaching that Christ will raise the superstructure of the brotherhood of man, for right human relations are an expression of the love of God. They will constitute man's major and next demonstration of divinity. Today, in the midst of this devastated, chaotic, and unhappy world, mankind has a fresh opportunity to reject selfish materialistic living and to begin to tread the lighted way. The moment that humanity shows its willingness to do this, then the Christ will come, and there is every evidence at this time that men are learning this lesson and making their first faltering steps along that lighted way of right relationships. For more details and the full online version of Alice Bailey's book, The Reappearance of the Christ, please visit lucistrust.org. Spiritual viewers, we appreciate your kind presence for today's Words of Wisdom entitled The Reappearance of the Christ by Alice Bailey, selection from Christ's Unique Occasion, Part 2 of 2.